shelter during the rain. But the eagle avoids the rain by flying above the clouds. Problems are common, but attitude makes the difference. This is what we believe in at DIEMS and say, let us rise above the rest. In pursuance of excellence in the field of technical education, the Marathwada Shikshan Prasarak Mandal, one of the leading educational trusts imparting quality education to more than 1 lakh students every year, entered the field of professional education on its Golden Jubilee celebration in the name of the Deogiri Institute of Engineering and Management Studies, Aurangabad. Started with 300 students in 2009, it has grown to over 3,000 students offering technical and management education with ultra-modern infrastructure and facilities. It is recognized amongst the top 100 private engineering institutes across India by Times Engineering, which is a Times of India initiative. The institute is approved by the AICTE, accredited by NAC, and affiliated to the Baba Sahib Ambedkar Technological University, Lonere, Raigad, Maharashtra. The institute offers an industry-oriented syllabus, internship from the first year itself, gives a choice of open electives from the second year and six months of industrial training in the final year, enabling students to develop knowledge as per industrial requirements. The institute offers the B.Tech and M.Tech courses in various disciplines like mechanical engineering, electronics and telecommunication engineering, civil engineering, computer science and engineering, as well as a master's in business administration. Leaders become great not because of their power, but because of their ability to empower others. Creative learning, personal attention, individual counseling and valuable guidance open up a world of new ideas which infuse the motivated students and staff with positive energy and creative thoughts. This can be expressed as a unique equation. DIEMS is equal to discipline plus academics plus placements. Why DIEMS? There are more than 40 spacious and well-ventilated classrooms which provide a healthy environment for innovative classroom learning. More than 60 well-equipped laboratories with best-in-class equipments meet not only the requirements of the syllabi, but they are also intended to give practical experience to the students. The students here enjoy the fun of performing various scientific experiments. Playing with various circuit components and seeing how they work in real time is the best way to learn. Competent teachers demonstrate the experiments in the labs and the students get opportunities to explore inside and beyond the classrooms. These labs provide the facilities for performing practicals on the related concepts on each subject. There are updated software and equipment for the different subjects. Here, the future engineers experiment with, test and prove theorems. Every laboratory aims to prepare students with the knowledge and ability to improve, evaluate, design and control sustainable and cost-effective technologies in order to make innovative and useful contributions to humanity. In order to ensure that the students are well aware of the required industrial standards, not just theoretically but also in practice, we at DIEMS have a fully equipped central workshop. Here, the students are not only informed about the various stages in the making of a job, but they also get a chance to perform all these jobs on the shop floor. The students complete their projects in the workshop for vehicle manufacturing and assembling of parts. Here, we make sure that our future engineers never miss out on the finest details regarding the various elements of manufacturing. The institute's library is enveloped in a serene atmosphere. It has a spacious reading room and serves the students and the faculty with more than 30,000 reference books, periodicals, magazines, newspapers and journals. Our digital library provides the students with online books and e-journals, articles, video lectures, manuals and many more. It also provides updates, study material and databases on a large scale, all of which support the academic curriculum of students. Our students enjoy the facility of an elegant seminar hall for conducting guest lectures, training programs and technical events. The spacious conference room is outfitted with presentation technology for conducting conferences, meetings and presentations. To meet activity-based programs, short-term training programs and technical workshops, distinct seminar halls have been provided. Understanding the dynamics of industrial expectation at the national and international levels 
This year, the students have been trained by companies like TCS, TechRel and Barclays. The highest number of job offers was achieved in 2019 with offers from companies like Baiju's, Wipro Technologies, Reliance Geo, Atlas Copco India Limited, Dhut Transmission, Jaro Education, Hire, Sintel and many others. The highest compensation package offered was 9 lakh rupees per annum. The girls as well as boys hostels of DIEMS is located in a safe and secure campus and it is indeed a new home away from home. Strict rules are followed and discipline is not compromised. The mess is a great place where food is cooked to perfection and where the homemade flavors and tastes and affordable prices are a hit with the hostelites. Well, the canteen is the favorite place for the students to relax from their hectic schedules. It is also the best place for students to mingle in groups. We encourage our students to excel not just in academics but also in sports. Situated in the center of our campus is a vast lush green playground where students can bring out the athlete in them. Under the NSS activity, the students take concrete steps to discharge their social responsibility by performing various activities like organizing tree plantation drives and blood donation camps, check dam construction and conducting street plays. The institute has also adopted a village, Sultanpur, under this initiative and are educating the local people every year about critical subjects like water conservation, environmental awareness and child education. The college frequently takes the students on industrial visits to various companies with the objective of providing them exposure to real-world problems and inculcate a practical approach. More than 500 industrial visits have been arranged so far. DIEMS has a strong network with the corporate sector, professionals and industrial experts and regularly hosts expert talks with the noble intention of keeping the students updated with the latest trends and practices in the industry. More than 350 expert talks have been arranged annually. As a part of Industry Institute Interaction, 102 of our students worked in the industry on 34 live projects under GIZ initiative to develop the students' sometimes enigmatic personalities, there are 20 active clubs in the institute. The Deogiri Cycling Club has completed an arduous expedition from Jammu to Kanyakumari giving the message, Save the Girl Child and another expedition from Aurangabad to Bhutan which had the message, A Pollution-Free Asia. The Red Hat Academy helps students differentiate themselves by providing enterprise-ready Linux and open-source advanced training which develops skills that are in demand. More than 150 students have been certified so far and more than 50 students have got jobs in open-source technologies. SHOW 2019 was a one-of-a-kind exhibition project in which the projects were prepared by first-year engineering students under the course Engineering Exploration. These students generated 35 great ideas, worked on 12 neat statements and developed 60 projects along with the final year students who exhibited their lab-to-land projects. More than 6,000 visitors visited this mega event. Recently, the institute had organized the flagship fourth international conference on computing in engineering and technology. Here, researchers, engineers and scientists from around the world participated and presented their research papers which were published in the AISC series of Springer. The institute is well known for its dazzling academic records. The students have brought glory to the institute with consistent performances in the university exams by securing top ranks in the merit list and setting new benchmarks every year. We have excelled with flying colors in technical events as well. Team Dynamic Boosters won the general championship in the Student Cart Design Challenge Season 2 held at Hyderabad and also stood second runner-up in the Bharat Formula National Level Go-Kart Championship held at Coimbatore in March 2019. The all-girls team Tejaswini got the Best Cost-Effective Report Award and Visionary Award in the Saur Urja Vehicle Challenge held in March 2019. Recently, Team Bhumiputra won the Best Innovation Award for the Onion Harvester in the event Tifan organized by SAE India. A college is marked by its multifaceted cultural events that include its annual social gathering. 
eminent personalities from the civil services and the industry are invited as chief guests and they are invariably a great source of inspiration to the youngsters. The festival includes various events where the students are given a unique platform to think, step forward and showcase their talents. This event has its own color and is very unique in its own way. This year too, we celebrated Quasars 2019 with the unique theme of patriotism dedicated to the brave Indian soldiers who sacrificed their lives during the Pulwama attack. Financial support of 5 lakh rupees was given to the families of the martyrs. DIEMS providing education ingrained with moral and social values to bring out the youth as professional and responsible citizens with character and humility beyond compare. DIEMS an institute where the sky is not the limit and so we say let us rise above the rest hello my name is Vinayak Podar and I'm from computer science department I recently got placed in Baidu's Think and Learn private limited through the campus placement drives so along with the technical education the social skills also need to be developed uh, equally uh, and for this the college has been striving hard by uh, keeping events such as uh, inspire talks because of which the students are getting more connected to the industry and the industry people. So thank you Devgiri Institute of Engineering and Management Studies for providing me with such a great opportunity to me and all my friends. Hello everyone, my name is Vaishnavi Solunke and I am a computer science graduate from Devgiri Institute of Engineering and Management Studies. Today I am placed in ASP OL Media Private Limited and the credit for this goes to the college. The college conducted aptitude trainings and soft skill programs for the students and I feel proud and privileged to be a part of DIEMS family. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Duip Kohli from Mechanical Department and I am from Bombay. I have uh, selected this yeah. institute because of its unique features like the mentor mentee scheme which develops a strong bond between the students and the teachers. And at the same time, it also allowed me to participate in various competitive events and also it given me the opportunity to participate and be shortlisted in various multinational companies like John Deere and Cummins. Hello, I'm Swati Kakade, pass out from DIEMS, currently working in a Microsoft as an associate consultant in data and AI. And I would like to thank DIEMS for their cooperation and support. Hello everyone, my name is Aditya Konade. I am a site reliability engineer at Red Hat Germany. I am a computer science engineering graduate from the IMS with the batch of 2017. And I thank the college for their continued support and engagement. I am Kulima Zalde. I am a civil engineer passed out from DIEMS. I am uh, currently working as environmental health and safety officer in MIT construction in water division. And I thanks DIEMS for their valuable inputs, support, and guidance. Hello, this is Yogesh Gawande, BE Mechanical from 2018 batch. I have started my own startup company when I was in second year in DIMS. Uh, I would like to say that DIMS is a very good institute for uh, aspiring engineering students. It has all the facilities to meet the needs of students. I am thankful to management and DIMS family. Thank you. Hello, I'm Saidi from BECSC 2018 batch. Currently, I'm working as Associate Quality Engineer at Red Hat Bangalore. I would like to say that the Institute has been very supportive and has played a phenomenal role in my success. I would like to thank the DIMS family and feel immensely proud that I got a chance to be a part of it. A very good morning to one and all. I, Srinivas Chinskedkar, heartily welcome all of you. Heartily welcomes all of you on behalf of Basic Science and Humanities Department, Devgiri Institute of Engineering and Management Studies, Aurangabad, for this webinar on Career in Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning. Devgiri Institute of Engineering is marching towards an extra mile with a smile in the momentous task with a mission to nurture each student by providing them guidance about engineering field 
from the experts of various fields as you might know that our intelligence is what makes us human and artificial intelligence is an extension of that quality success in creating artificial intelligence would be the biggest event in human history so it is important for us to know more about artificial intelligence and machine learning today we feel honored to have with us dr ashish tendulkar machine learning specialist google professor kuraker professor computer science department dr batu lonere dr ullas shurkar director devgiri institute of engineering and management studies aurangabad professor sb kalyankar vice principal diems dr satyavan donge head bsh diems and unique and talented students who want to build their career in engineering a warm welcome to one and all dear all true guidance is like a small torch in the dark forest it does not show everything at once but gives enough light for the next step to be safe such guidance we get frequently from our director dr ullas shurkar sir dr ullas shurkar sir is the director of dims since its inception the institute has achieved a remarkable position in a very short span due to his dynamic leadership he holds a doctorate degree and is a prominent academician in engineering with 34 years of experience in education and industry sector he is a respected figure in engineering education field in our region he is a member on academic council of dr baba saheb ambedkar technological university lonere and an active member on various committees of dr baba saheb ambedkar marathwada university aurangabad his hands on approach a personal connection with all staff students and motivational mentoring are the secret of our institute's growth sir has achieved many awards and recognition in his career such as seva gaurav award by marathwada shiksham prasarak mandal in 2014 engineering with watch educator award 2013 for impressive contribution to engineering education dronacharya award by lions club aurangabad in 2012 guruvari award by rotary club aurangabad in 2011 He also holds many patents and published more than 25 research papers in reputed journals and authored three books. Having such a leader is truly inspirational for all of us. Now I request Dr. Shivurka sir to address the students. Over to you, sir. Uh, very good morning to all of you. Am I audible, Jinsh Kedkar sir? Am I audible? Hello. Am I audible? हेलो आम ऑडिबल चिंचकेटकर विचार मज आवाज ऐको का वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू माय फ्रेंड डॉक्टर किवेकर टुडे रिसोर्स पर्सन डॉक्टर आशीष तेंडुलकर Tendulkar is a very familiar name for all of us. He is a hero for everybody, Sachin Tendulkar. But today we have a different hero in the field of engineering, the Mr. Ashish, Dr. Ashish Tendulkar. The basic reason for conducting this series of webinar is that normally, क्या होता है कि तुम इस जगह मुल्ला influence में दे admission के तहत कोणीतरी सांगतं ही ब्रँड चांगली आहे म्हणून जावं कोणतरी म्हणतं यांनी अमेरिकेला जायला मिळतं सध्या अमेरिकेला जायला घाबरतो आपण पण ती परिस्थिती बदलणार आहे आणि मग आपण हे शिकावं ते शिकवून आपण स्वतःची बेसिक विसरतो टू टू मेक यू अवेअर अबाउट द एव्हरी ब्रँच वी आर ट्राईंग टू इन्व्हाइट द पर्सन फ्रॉम इंडस्ट्रीज द पर्सनॅलिटी फ्रॉम इंडस्ट्रीज जसं टुडे वी आर हॅव्हिंग Dr. Ashish Tendulkar, who is from Google. Then there will be one on mechanical engineering by Dr. Mr. Abhange, who is from Gabriel India. Then we have Dr. R. P. Deshpande from Intel Global for Electronics. Ms. R. P. Ta Seth is working in San Francisco with Facebook for computer science, and Mr. Bansode for civil engineering. What is my request to all of you? please attend all the webinars if some of your friends are missing today's webinar 
tell them not to miss this opportunity as this contents are available on youtube you can retrieve it at any time right now everybody of us with a very disturbed mindset because of the corona and particularly for you it is ambiguity in your mind what will be my career when it is going to be start so my 12th ki parisha sampurna khub dhir jale i am not knowing when the date of cvt is there whether the cvt will be there or not blah 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 what is the thing is like that right now with today's situation the cvt will be there maybe in the month of september and if not there it will be for everybody if it is there it will be for everybody so don't waste your time whether the cvt will be there or not try to study more and more so what happened the concept of your physics chemistry maths will be more and more stronger and that will be useful for your engineering so your cvt is not only the subjects are not only cracking the cvt but that will be useful for your engineering career also i wish you all the best for your performance in cvt try to get best of the education whatever the problems you are having regarding education you can call up anybody of us for the guidance we are definitely love to help you thank you to dr kivrekar sir thank you to ashish sir in spite of very busy so i know what is his working and everything he has accepted our invitation to talk with you the success will depend upon how many questions will be there from your side so whatever the questions are there please try to keep it in the chat box so that ashish sir or anybody other will be helping you to give your answer thank you once again thank you thank you very much sir the speech movement is the only the present movement is the only movement available to us and it is the door to all movements so for opening the doors of our bright future we have an amazing personality today with us i feel immense pleasure to welcome dr ashish tendulkar machine learning specialist google before requesting sir to address the session i am extremely honored to have the chance to introduce him Doc, dr ashish hardly need any introduction you have made all of us proud by your distinguished work in numerous capacities as ad, an idol of knowledge experience and inspiration to all of us he has completed his school education from marathi medium he is a software engineer at google research he has been working with machine learning and its application for the last 19 years in the past dr ashish has worked as an assistant professor of computer science and engineering at iit madras he holds phd in computer science from iit bombay i feel proud to announce that he is a gold medalist of his btech batch from dr baba saheb ambedkar technological university lonere he added one more feather in his cap by receiving innovative young biotechnologist award from government of india in 2009 dr ashish acted as trusted machine learning advisor for startups in diverse areas including fashion fine tech agri tech healthcare and many more dr ashish held several responsibilities in his career few responsibilities i would like to mention here such as machine learning architect in google principal data scientist in media.net vice principal vice president data science in reliance industries research fellow tata institute of fundamental research mumbai so on and so forth he has several awards and recognitions to his record some are best research research scholar award by research scholar forum of indian institute of technology bombay infosys research fellowship by infosys foundation sir is a polyglot having proficiency over five languages including spanish and tamil to sum up with sir has 21 publications five projects and six honors and rewards in his credit i may go on and on as sir's achievements are highly appreciated with uh, with this i kindly request dr ashish tendulkar to start his session at the same time i request all the students that if you have any questions post it in the chat box sir please
Shivankar sir, thank you for inviting me and giving this opportunity to talk with uh, aspiring engineers uh, from Maratwada region. And uh, I'm really honored to uh, talk in presence of my guru, uh, Professor Kivadekar, who really introduced me to computer science by teaching me Fortran programming language in my first year uh, back in Donere. Um, yeah, uh, so thank you very much. And what I will do today is um, I will essentially talk about AI. And uh, you know, I will try to talk in Marathi. So if any one of you have problems, uh, you know, feel free to uh, you know put it in the chat. And I will have a small presentation for this. So let me share my screen. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah, and uh, yeah, before I begin, Malavar Sangla Atla Sangla Sangala Audelki Shivur Karasan Sai Kupchan initiative ahe. कारण बारावी नंतर मुलाना फार कमी कमी आइडियाज थे कि उड़े काय कराये थे आणि तंचा सर्टी ता मुलान सर्टी हेजे सेशंस हैं थे मी मंडो कि एका प्रकार से वरदान है कि तुम्हाला वेग वेग या फील्ड मतलब लोकन करों तंचा क्षेत्र पर दलाई कला में में आणि हे अतिशय चांगले इनिशिएटिव है आणि मी हे सर्व व्हिडिओ बघत होतो कॉलेज बद्दल तर अतिशय चांगलं काम तुम्ही सगळे करताय तुम्हाला त्या कामाबद्दल शुभेच्छा आणि मुलांनी या वेबिनार सिरीजचा जास्तीत जास्त प्रमाणात लाभ घ्यावा अशी मी तुम्हाला सर्वांना विनंती करतो आणि आता मी सुरू करतो सर मी एआय बद्दल बोलणार आहे एआय म्हणजे मी त्याला मराठीत म्हणतो कृत्रिम प्रज्ञा आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजन्स तर हे आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजन्स नेमकं काय आहे हे आपण बघूया तर तुम्हाला सर्वांना मी असं असं समजतो की कम्प्युटर प्रोग्रामिंग बद्दल माहित असेल आणि माहित नसेल तरी ठीक आहे त्याच्याबद्दल आपण बोलूया तर समजा मी तुम्हाला सांगितलं दोन संख्यांची बेरीज करा सो ऍड टू नंबर्स अप ह्याच्यासाठी तुम्ही छोटासा एक प्रोग्राम लिहा तर तो प्रोग्राम लिहिणं कदाचित फार सोपं असेल खूप मुलांसाठी ज्यांना लँग्वेज येत आहे आणि ज्यांना येत नाही त्यांना मी म्हटलं तो दोन संख्यांची बेरीज करून दाखवा तर तुम्ही म्हणाल काय मी बारावी झालो आहे दोन संख्यांची बेरीज करणं हे माझ्या डाव्या हाताचा खेळ आहे तर काय काय असतं ह्याच्यामध्ये हे हे आपण थोडंसं समजून घेऊया आणि मी हे अशासाठी सांगतोय की इकडनं आपण ए आय कडे जाऊ त्यावेळेला तुम्हाला ह्याची फार ह्या ह्या कम्पॅरिझनचा फार उपयोग आहे तर दोन संख्यांची बेरीज करणं आपल्याला फार सोपं जातं आणि त्याच्यासाठी काय असतं आपल्याकडे आपल्याकडे रुल्स असतात दोन संख्यांची बेरीज कशी करायची ह्याचे आपल्याला आपल्या शिक्षकांनी शिकवलेले नियम असतात ते आपण नियम वापरतो आणि आपण त्या दोन संख्या घेतो ते डेटाच्या स्वरूपात आपल्याला मिळतात दोन संख्या मिळतात आपल्याला दोन संख्यांचा नियम माहिती आहे गेरजेचा तो आपण करून आपण एक उत्तर शोधून काढतो तर ही प्रोग्रामिंग मध्ये असं होतं म्हणजे ज्या ज्या गोष्टी करण्याचे आपल्याला नियम माहित आहेत ते नियम वापरून आपल्याला जर त्या प्रकारची माहिती दिली गेली तर आपण त्याची उत्तरं शोधू शकतो आता ए आय मध्ये काय होतं बघा ए आय म्हणजे आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजन्स आणि मी एम एल ही दुसरी एक टर्म इथे वापरलेली आहे एम एल म्हणजे मशीन लर्निंग तर ह्या दोन्ही गोष्टी आजच्या आजच्या युगामध्ये इंटरचेंजेबली वापरल्या जातात काही लोक ए आय म्हणतात काही लोक त्याला मशीन लर्निंग म्हणतात तर ए आय हे फार असं समजा की हे बाहेरच बाह्य बाह्य वर्तुळ आहे आणि ए आय म्हणजे काय तर माणसासारखं संगणकाला शिकवता येईल का माणसासारखी बुद्धी प्रदान करता येईल का असा विचार शास्त्रज्ञांना संगणक जेव्हा तयार झाले तेव्हा हिंदी आणि हिंदी इंग्लिश ओके ओके शुअर आय आय गो टू इंग्लिश दॅन इफ इट इज ओके ओके so essentially uh, you know what ai and machine learning so ai you can think of ai as an outer circle which is um, you know which is encompassing everything it is like providing intelligence to the machine and uh, scientists thought about making machines intelligent uh, right from uh, the time when some, when computers were discovered okay and machine learning uh, you know are set of techniques that are used to achieve ai okay machine learning uh, you know is some set of techniques to achieve ai right and and 
and now you know i would like you to essentially contrast between uh, the two boxes that you have right in the first box we said that we want to write program to add two numbers we had rules and we take data we apply those rules and we get answers now in ai what you can notice the position of answer and rules had changed right answers which were on the right hand side in programming have come on the left hand side and rules which were on the left hand side in programming have gone to the right hand side so let's take a concrete example ek aap udaharan ke liye apan bogiya hum ek example leke dekhenge samjho aapko ek face diya gaya hai aadmi ka so you are given a face of a human and you are asked to recognize the face so let's say i show you a picture on your mobile phone and i ask you to recognize the faces of persons or humans right all of you will be able to do it very easily because all of us are trained to uh, you know look at the faces and recognize whether it's a human or not now if i ask you to you know do that by writing some mathematical equation or by writing some algorithm all of us will struggle we know how to do the task but we do not know the exact mathematics behind that particular task so in class 12 you learn or 11 and 12 you learn notion of functions right so what is functions so so function takes some value and it transforms it into some other value right so we have to learn that kind of a function where given a picture or given a uh, given a picture or photograph so photograph uh, on on the screen is made up of pixels right and uh, you know we see the picture by uh, uh, illumination of different colors so given this uh, pixel grid or pixel matrix can i uh, you know return can i learn a function that returns a value which are 0 or 1 correct so that is that is a big problem right that that's a problem so we do not know know this function and through ai and machine learning techniques what we'll try to do is we'll try to learn these rules so essentially uh, in the context of the photo uh, i'll give lots of lots and lots of photos to the computer to the ai algorithm and i'll also give the answers whether there is a human face present or not and the ai techniques what they'll do is they'll come up with a rule right so what was the rule in case of addition of two numbers the addition of two numbers let's say given two numbers a and b the rule was a plus b was the rule right so you know uh, similar to a plus b uh, you know we may learn some kind of a complex function and that function uh, you know will be returned by ai when we supply uh, with data and answers um, is this clear to everyone i have no way uh, to look at my window because my on my screen i have complete presentation so i take questions kate kar sir to you know um, interrupt me and ask me any questions if, if at all there are any from the students sir uh, up till now no question is there okay okay, okay. thank you no problem so if you uh, if any of you have any questions feel free to uh, type them in uh, in the box and they'll come to me. okay all right so this is this is the basic uh, you know basics of ai what ai is so essentially given data and answers uh, we try to you know decipher the rules okay so uh, you know i'll define ai i had written this in marathi i'll uh, you know um, read it in marathi first and then also translate it in english so bahya vidase means bahya vidase achu karta lavnachi asha vidan madhun shiknachi ani vishishta uddishte ani karya sadhya karnachi um sangalak pranaliki kshamta yala prutrim pradna ase manta so what is there so we have data so computer can interpret the data it can learn from that data and it can use it to fulfill certain objectives or functions uh, whatever function that they learn uh, in a very flexible manner and that is called as ai okay so in ai what is the most important thing uh, having data is the most important thing in ai without data there is no ai okay so remember this from this presentation if you do not have data you may not be able to do ai i'll give you some more examples of ai for example uh, let's say uh, you know if you want uh, if someone ask you how much time does it take between your um, between your home uh, to your school or to your class tuition class right and all of you are able to answer that question right i mean why are you able to answer that question because you are traversing that route every day 
and uh, you have uh, somehow understood how much time does it take right maybe on saturday morning if you are driving or sunday morning when a lot of people are not there on the road you will take lesser time but let's say on a weekday you will probably take more time because there are a lot more uh, vehicles on the road right so uh, you know uh, this is what we do in our uh, uh, inside our brain and we try to come up with this answer when somebody asks this question to you uh, so if you want computer to learn this so what you need to do uh, do is you need to give computer uh, you know the time that it takes from your school to your college or to your tuition class by days and based on that computer easily understands uh, you know um, how much time roughly it will take and for that it uses some models uh, of probability uh, and statistics you have learned i'm sure you have learned probability in your 12th standard and uh, i'm i'm really glad to tell you that some of the techniques that you learn in the calculus right or in uh, like derivatives and finding uh, you know maxima and minima of function are essentially workhorse of artificial artificial intelligence so these techniques form the core of the artificial intelligence and i'm going to talk about this later in my uh, in my um, talk so what are the examples of ai uh, first is self driving car so this is the uh, google self driving car i'm giving you uh, intentionally some sci fi examples and uh, you know what is there so i told you that given an input we have to learn uh, what is the output in ai right uh, let me actually try to play a video um so one of the technique in ai is called machine learning and you know uh, whatever um advancement that you see uh, in ai has come because of a specific technique called a supervised learning uh, where we give uh, you know uh, examples like photos and whether photo uh, whether the person is present or not so we give examples of input and output and we try to learn the function that connects input to the output okay so i'll give you some examples and uh, you know ai is already there in our life uh, we use a lot of ai without really realizing that there is ai uh, so if all of you are using some kind of an email system it's a gmail uh, so there is a spam filter right i mean the emails that are not useful are getting marked as spam and the spam emails are being marked by um, ai system or a machine learning system right uh, you must be using uh, you know audio or or voice to give commands to your uh, mobile phone correct so uh, you know that is done by a technique called a speech recognition which also uses uh, you know uh, technology of ai uh, you know behind right uh, other thing is if you are using machine translation let's say if you have used google translate um, to translate between different languages from english to marathi or english to hindi or hindi to chinese or hindi to spanish you know uh, those techniques are called as machine translation technique and uh, if you I, i'm sure you must be using google search so google search also uses ai uh, in the background where uh, your query is used to retrieve uh, the web pages uh, that are likely to contain the information that you are seeking from the from the search system right uh, if you are using let's say youtube you you get to see you know um, some kind of a video recommendation videos that you may like that also comes from ai right or if you go to amazon for example uh, or flipkart and uh, you get essentially pro you know recommendation for products and books that also comes from ai so you know there are so many examples of ai uh, that we use in our daily life without really knowing that uh, you know uh, ai or machine learning is being used uh, in order to give you uh, those those answers any questions so far okay yes sir there is one question yeah. sure sir as artificial buzz word but of today but all behind of this you need to build critical thinking so can you educate us how to work on it <laughs> sure 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 ai is uh, you know problem solving is is, is a basic technique and uh, you know uh, only way to master that is to you know practice uh you know problem solving and have kind of a critical thinking uh so whenever you uh, you see some piece of work it's important to ask questions right and by asking questions you can get more clarity about it uh so so asking question is is one part of developing critical thinking second part is you know uh, if you see some piece of work you know try to implement it try to do it by 
uh, by yourself. And while doing that, you will start understanding uh, various difficulties. And then you can think about better ways of doing those things, right? So that's, you know, doing, doing things on your own, DIY, is another um, critical component of developing, uh, you know, um, critical thinking. And third part is essentially rela relating things, right? I mean, if you, if you know a few techniques from other domains, uh, when you come across the problems in some other domain, how can you transfer the learnings that you had in another domain to, to this new Hello, sir. There is no audio, sir. Hello. Hello. There is no Can audio. Sir. Sorry. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Given this particular picture of lion, computer is able to recognize this animal, and you know you get output of lion. If given this particular audiogram, computer is able to, able to recognize what is being spoken. So for example, here, you know, this audiogram is hello, how are you? And, uh, you know, um, sorry, this audiogram is how cold it is outside. Then we can do machine translation task like, you know, hello, how are you get translated to Namaskar ka sehat in Marathi. And this is, this is, you know, uh, one of the really, really Okay, I'll move forward. And what I will do is now I'll, I'll play a video uh, of, of this self-driving car. This is not a science fiction. And you will actually see how this self-driving car works. My name is Nathaniel Fairfield. I'm a software engineer at Waymo. Back when we started this, we were the Google self-driving car project, and self-driving cars didn't really exist. Thinking about our first thousand miles, and our first ten thousand miles, and our first hundred, first million, you've actually got breadth and diversity of mileage, and you start to see some of the patterns of driving. The ten million mile milestone is about ten lifetimes of driving. It's a huge amount of experience that we've gained across the country in all kinds of driving conditions. And it takes that kind of experience to learn all of these lessons to really make that possible. How does Waymo see the ball before anyone else? It's always looking. It's always looking in all directions. The lasers are what lets it spot a small moving object that's approaching towards the car and estimate its position and velocity very precisely. So this is a very interesting case where there's actually a couple with a dog. At the same time, a jogger is just passing by. The jogger swings around the dog out of the bike lane into the road. The car doesn't just understand where the agents are. It actually understands how they're going to interact in the near future and is able to make those predictions in the blink of an eye before you can really understand it exactly what's going on. This is light construction, which, you know, as a, as a human driver is one of the more stressful things. The car handles it really, really, really well because the car sees as well at night as it does during the day. For the lasers and for the radars, they see where the cones are, where that aisle of traffic that's being laid out here by the construction zone is going. Red lights and green lights, they're really important, but people sometimes don't obey that. In a case like this, where the red light runner happened, the car is actually checking all around in all directions all at once. And so it can see when there's somebody coming who looks like, wait, they're not really slowing down for their red light. And at some point you decide, wait, they actually look like they're going to run the red light. 
Let's stop and let them go through, and then after they've gone, you know, we go. So the thing that's amazing about this one is that you can't see in dust storms like these. There's actually a pedestrian out there. The car sees perfectly well in advance. It's just walking across the road. The car sees it using its lasers and radars. It starts slowing down before you as a human even understand what's happening. A regular person has a lot of built-in assumptions about how the world works. The car is really thinking and is designed to consider all of the worst case stuff that we have ever seen and how that can play out. So that makes it in many ways a very careful driver that is thinking through all the repercussions that you might not be doing. It doesn't get sleepy or drowsy drunk or distracted by cell phone, or distracted by the children in the back seat. The car is always paying attention to all of these factors and trying to think ahead. In the early days, we used to joke, how many engineers does it take to drive a driverless car? <laughs> There'd be a bunch of people watching the thing, and so every mile it drove, there were a whole pile of people attending. Those first 10 million miles were about learning and drawing and proving things out. The next 10 million, the next 100 million, the next billion miles, are about the cars just driving themselves, driving safely, driving people where they need to go and really making it easy and safe for people to get around. And that's super exciting. Did you find this exciting? Yes, sir. Yeah, this was interesting, right? I know Aurangabad is a city of automobiles, and a lot of mechanical engineering enthusiasts will really like this particular example. All right, so this is about self driving car, and this is no more science fiction. This is in existence, and it has, you know, uh, driven uh, one crore kilometers without, you know, doing any accident, which is very, very important. Second one is, uh, you know, we are using AI to detect uh, this special condition called as diabetic retinopathy. And this diabetic retinopathy is one of the conditions that is responsible for, you know, blindness. You know, diabetic patients are at risk of, you know, getting blinded because of this particular thing. And only way you can uh, prevent this is to detect it early and then you can uh, do some kind of treatment to slow down the the spread of this particular condition and uh, you know we applied uh, we developed a technique uh, based on computer vision uh, where we uh, you know scanned the retina of the eye and predicted uh, it to be either healthy or diseased and uh, you know uh, it's very really interesting to know that computer uh, is able to do this at the level of expert doctors right so you know this which is quite impressive and you know this diabetic retinopathy uh, is uh, you know is being used is under trial now in different eye hospitals in India, um, in different hospitals, and yeah, uh, you, will, you will encounter this very soon, um, you know, uh, in, in in real working condition in in, in Indian hospitals. Okay. So so as part of uh, this. Uh, diabetic retinopathy project. Uh, you know, I, I, I have written this in Marathi, Jaina Deke, Dr. Desangi AI. Uh, so the thing that doctor is not able to see, uh, AI is able to see that. So, uh, you know, uh, while doing this particular project, uh, uh, you know, our engineers, Google engineers found that they're able to predict a lot many things by looking at your eyes. They're able to predict health of your liver, health of your kidney, health of your heart, uh, just by looking at your retina. Uh, which which is a very very uh, interesting discovery in my opinion, and you can use this particular retina scan as non-invasive way of examining some of these internal organs, so which is very very interesting. And all this is possible due to just due to AI, right? And I'll play on yet another video, which is this is very very Indian video, um, and uh, we have developed a technique for uh, you know flood forecasting. Uh, so whenever there are floods, uh, you know. Uh, we get these floods without any notice, and it causes huge amount of damage to human life as well as other uh, other properties. So you know, uh, we worked with some of the government agencies to uh, you know predict the flood, and I'll play a video around around this. Okay. <laughs> 
दोस्तों के साथ खेलते थे और वहाँ पे सारा मजा आता था फिर नदी आ गई तो काट लिया आगरा में थी सारे काट लिया गांव को कोई सूचना मिलती ही नहीं अगर कोई सूचना मिलती तो हम लोग को मदद मिलते कोई मदद नहीं है हमारे One of the most important variables during a crisis is reliable information. There is so much work that's already been done by governments, by the UN and NGOs, and we're trying to learn from that work, build on that, and assist them with their goals. In India, where we're running our first pilot program, the government has thousands of people who are measuring the water level in rivers across India with what is effectively very long measuring sticks, which are called stream gauges, every hour, which allows them to know whether the river will overflow and flood, but it doesn't yet allow them to understand exactly what areas are going to be affected, what neighborhoods, or even what villages. Any station calling? Any station? The response time is most crucial thing. But reducing the response time always plays very important and vital role in the whole disaster management framework. Advancement in technology would help us better in spreading this message faster. Flood forecasting was a very exploratory project. The big technical question was, can we have enough information to try to do forecasting that would be accurate enough to make a difference? Starting with the basic needs for getting information about what's going on, where is it happening, what should they be doing? To be able to provide a forecast in real time, we rely on the government we're working with. We complement their effort by adding accurate modeling to that process. We start by collecting thousands of satellite images to build a digital model of the terrain. Based on these maps, we generate hundreds of thousands of simulations of how the river could possibly behave. We receive the measurements from the government and cross those measurements with our simulations. We can then send those forecasts to individuals using search, maps, and android notifications. This is an example of an alert that we can produce. This alert is from Vietnam. This alert is actually has over 90% accuracy. The lead time is incredibly important, yeah. even more than the specifics. Any information we can give, they will use. Want to show them the alert? Talking to people who directly experience severe floods and understanding what they really need is incredibly important for us to know how we can really help. This is an opportunity to collaborate in a global scale. We are in very exciting time to use technology to try to make a difference. I can't imagine a greater privilege than to do what we love and do it in a way that could actually help people directly in a very profound way. Our hope for the future is to give people a few more days of warning before a flood occurs and to use AI to scale this and provide these forecasts anywhere in the world wherever people need them. Isn't it exciting? Yes, sir. There is one question from... Sure. Sure. Uh, sir, in India, are we using AI for flood situation and for rainfall percentage? 
Yeah, so this is this is example from India. So we are using this uh, in India now, and uh, sometimes we see these alerts on our on our Google Maps. Uh, you know where um, where you get alert right before the flood is going to happen. I'm at least aware that you see the alert in Patna, uh, in North India. At least these alerts are um, enabled. Uh, yeah. Thank you. One more question is there. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, as a beginner in the engineering field, what mm -hmm. are the requisite skills I must have for a good career in AI? Yeah, you need to uh, essentially know a bit of programming. And uh, you know, if you are good at stats and mathematics, um, that would be uh, good. But it is, again, not prerequisite. You can pick it up on the way. But programming and you know, uh, interest in looking at data, understanding, you know, uh, facts on the data is kind of a prerequisite, I would say. And Thank any you. anybody from any any engineering can enter this particular field and leave their mark. So you can see that this is not only computer science, but you know, this is like uh, you know, collaborating with lots of other disciplines in order to understand and solve the most impactful problems. Right? This is collaboration with government and you know people who are expert in hydrology and use their expertise in order to understand how the flood forecasting will happen i mean how the floods will happen right anyway so i would uh, give you continue giving you some interesting more interesting facts so in 2011 these computer vision techniques which are now quite uh, matured were having error of 26 percent humans have error of five percent and come to 2016 you know, computers have, uh, you know, learned to see better than humans. Now, on a benchmark data set of ImageNet, computer systems have, computer vision systems have only 3% error, which is incredible in my opinion. So computers are able to see better than humans. And uh, that's why they are being used in, in multiple places. You saw one example in self-driving car. Uh, there was another example. Uh, you must have read an article a few years back, computer beating the world go champion, right? So computers uh, expert, you know, um, getting the expertise in Go and beating the world champion. Uh, so these are some of the, you know, really, really uh, solid uh, stories of AI. <coughs> and I said about this, right? No data, no AI. Uh, so we have to give lots of examples of input and output, right? And based on this, you know, computer uses mathematics optimization specifically and statistics to learn a model of you know how the input get transformed to the output right? and you know the very important takeaway message from this talk if you don't learn anything is no data no ai right? without data you just cannot do ai data is the most important prerequisite in ai right and i thought of including this particular thing i generally don't include all these technical slides in in, in the beginning presentation beginner's presentation but i thought it is very very important right i mean all of us have this attitude uh, whenever we learn this high school math, we are never told uh, where it will be useful. And you know, we learn learn this, we get good grades, good marks, and then we forget about it, right? And we move to the next standard. And you know, this comes back to bite us very badly in in the later year if you have not paid enough attention. <coughs> Sorry. So I'd like to demonstrate, you know, the the inner, you know, the most uh, important thing uh, that is powering AI, right? most important algorithm that is powering AI. You take any AI algorithm and ask how, how it is trained, uh, you know, uh, most most people will say that gradient descent. So gradient descent is really the workhorse which is uh, making AI possible. So what happens is that based on the examples that are given to us, example input and output, we learn what is called as, we define what is called as loss. So for example, uh, if, you, if, you are, if you have given me the photograph and I say that and if there is a human present, and I say that human is not present. So you say that, yeah, I penalize you. I don't give you any marks because you have made a mistake. And if I say it correctly, then you, you say that, yeah, it's correct. So I give you a mark of one. So, you know, we can define a very simple penalty structure. And based on that, we can calculate loss over all the examples, right? So, you know, this loss is an example of the, uh, the, the functional form or the weights in the functional form. The simplest functional form you'll be quite amazed is what you learn in standard eight probably is the equation of line, right? What is the equation of line? Y is equal to mx plus c. And where m and c 
are called as parameters. And this M and C is denoted here by W, right? So given this data, we have to learn this M and Cs. And that's all is AI about. And what happens is that depending on the value of M and C that we choose, you know, we get different line. And because of different lines, we essentially get different end of losses. So, you know, we actually, uh, you know, um, um, draw a loss curve, loss function based on the parameters. So given the parameters, you know, uh, this is one of the, uh, you know, um, important loss function. It's kind of, this loss function is very nicely behaved loss function, uh, like a mean squared error loss function, square loss loss function. And you can, uh, you know, the 12 standard students will be able to see, uh, see it and say that, yeah, yeah, this is a very nicely behaved loss function. Derivative is defined at each, look, each, each point on, on this function. And this function is exactly one minima, right? This function is exactly one minima and which is its global minima, right? And now if I want to find the minima of the function, all of you will remember your 12th, uh, 12th standard calculus and you know the chapter on derivative and applications of derivative to find the minima or maxima of the function. So exactly what uh, exactly that is the thing that we use in order to find the minima of the function. So what we do is, uh, you know, we start randomly at some point in the function and we calculate the gradient of the function at that particular point. This is the gradient. Gradient is nothing but a derivative, right? So derivative we find and we move in the negative direction of the derivative, right? So we move in the negative direction of the derivative by some margin, which is defined by what is called as learning, learning rate, which is based on our judgment. We decide to move a bit and then we go again there and we, we repeat the procedure at that, and now we come here we again find the gradient and move in the direction opposite direction of the gradient we keep repeating this until we uh, reach the um, reach the global minima uh, so this is a very cute application of derivative which is uh, which is a, which is at the center stage of all ai algorithms so you know i would you know i wanted to give this as a motivating example for all of you to take your mathematical mathematics study very very seriously calculus derivative trigonometry whatever you study because that is going to be very very useful in the later years of your life yeah and why why ai is now uh, very popular you know i would like to you know tell you that all the techniques that we are applying in ai they are not new they are there for at least last half a century they are 50 60 year old techniques but you know what has really happened in last maybe last decade is that you know all of us the smartphones have penetrated right uh, in every household all of us have you know multiple smartphones in our family and we are generating huge amount of data right smartphones have sensors and plus we are also generating huge amount of data it could be photographs it could be messages it could be various other activities that we do on our smartphones and this has led to a huge data deluge or there's a flooding of data and this data is uh, is what is being used to uh, you know train this humongous or massive ai systems so uh, this particular data of flooding is powering the the latest um, you know revolution in, in neural networks or ai in general uh, so earlier you know, we uh, even though these techniques were known, these algorithms were very hard to train because we were just not having enough examples. So, so this is what this is why uh, AI is hot right now. So, at this point, what I'll do is we have maybe another five five to ten minutes. I'll I'll quickly show you one AI system in work, and I'll show you how simple it is to implement the AI system. Right. So, these are the two things I'll do. So, this is a neural network playground, uh, which all of you can access from. Uh, you know, you can search on, on, on Google called Playground on TensorFlow and you see this URL. So, you know, here what you have is you have these two classes. One is the green, uh, the orange class and second is the uh, blue, blue class. And we want to essentially learn a line that separate these two classes. You can think of these two classes as one class is of good students, the student who obtain really good marks and ones who not really obtain good marks, right? And let's say, you know, the two axes are the amount of studies that you do and uh, let's say amount of assignments you do. So let's say these are two axes here, right? And we want to learn a separator between these two classes. And I'll, I'll quickly show you, you know, how, so uh, we looked at the gradient descent algorithm, right? We'll use a gradient descent algorithm and we'll essentially learn a line that separate these two classes. You see this? We have already learned a line very fast, right? I'll also show you, uh, you know, now this is a very interesting data set where two classes are separated by a circular boundary. 
and uh, you can quickly realize that in the case of equation of circle we have terms like x squared and y y squared so i'm going to uh, include two terms which are square terms and uh, so if i don't include these square terms and no matter how hard i try we are just not able to learn the separator so you know because we do not have you know the right kind of uh, function correct so the equation of line is not going to uh, you know get us a circle so in order to get a circular um, you know model uh, for the separation i included these two square terms and now you can see that uh, we have learned a circle right isn't it cool i mean this is like we are able to use uh, you know concept from high school uh, algebra and mathematics to uh, learn these kind of functions right then i will show you this another very interesting arrangement and if i into this kind of a term which is interaction term between two uh, you, know, you will be, you are able to see a very nice separation right if you include if you exclude this term you won't be able to do a good job right i mean yeah you can you can only separate some set of examples but this set of examples are not separated so it's it's not a great model or if you just remove this you will still not be able to learn the model right? yeah. not possible so you know so you have to include let's see this and you can see that how how it is affected i just wanted to show you you know uh, some some demo of this and now i'll show you how easy it is to train these systems and you don't have to you don't need to have fancy computers at your home you can do it in the browser this is called as collab which is which is you know a free uh, version uh, which is what Uh, you know, Google has hosted. So uh, you can think of this as a GUI for writing Python programs. Along with Python program, you can also write some kind of a text explaining what is really happening. So you know what this particular uh, function, what it does is it essentially uh, <clears throat> it essentially um, uh, learns to recognize the handwritten digits. So this is a data set of handwritten digits. and uh, you know the idea is there are 60000 images so i have 60000 um, you know images along with uh, the labels and labels are essentially what kind of uh, number is present in each of the image right and i will show you how easy it is to so this is where we are loading the data set and uh, you know this is this is how i built simple model uh, you know it will be very hard to explain what it is given that we do not have a lot of background but within three or four lines of code we are able to you know specify the model which is some kind of a function uh, where we have to learn the parameters you can think of these functions like equation of lines where m and c are not known and we are learning them from from the process from the from the examples and yeah this is where we are um, we are kind of yeah, i'll show you this is where we are training the model yeah let us quickly train the model yeah. So we have compiled the model, and now we are training the model. And this is where the gradient descent step happens. And you can see that uh, you know uh, with each step of gradient descent, we are able to get better and better accuracy. So with just three steps, we are able to accurately identify 96% of the digits correctly. <clears throat> and you can see that at the end of the uh, end of five iterations. or five complete iterations of the training set we are able to achieve accuracy of almost close to 98% uh, so you can see that within just 10 lines of code with these libraries we are able to also train the ai system so you know this is this is really really an exciting time to be <clears throat> to be alive and uh, in the field of engineering and in the field of ai uh, you know uh, and, and and this is expected to be uh, there uh, now that <clears throat> ai is here part of the mainstream so i would strongly encourage you to you know think of career in ai so all that uh, you know you, you need to essentially master you know computer programming that is one of the important things because you should be able to write programs read the data code these models uh, so that is that is one way of entering inside ai you can also enter ai from other disciplines so let's say you are a mechanical engineer and uh, you are you have some very interesting ideas about doing something uh, intelligently in certain machines you can make use of ai for example right so i'll give you an example so you know now we have ai systems that can predict the failures of machines even before they occur 
right? Because these AI systems are continuously monitoring the machine. You can hear, uh, you know, the noise in the machine. You can, uh, you know, get different parameters of the machine, and we can put these all these things together with an AI system, which can help you to predict the uh, the faults even before they occur. And this can actually save you a lot of time and uh, and money because. You know, certain machines which are very critical, if they go down, it causes huge amount of losses to the business. Um, so yeah, we can we can use that. So these are some of the industrial applications. There are lots of uh, interesting applications you can think in the Indian context. You know, you can bring in AI for bettering the education by in order to provide better education. Let's say in primary schools, you can use it for better sanitation. For example, you can use its AI systems to uh, separate the garbage into wet garbage and dry garbage, for example, right? Um, yeah, so there are a lot of interesting applications of AI systems. Uh, and I would strongly encourage you to you know, think about career in uh, AI because yeah, it's, it's not only uh, you know, a mechanical way of doing things. It's very, very creative. You have to think about uh, a new way of uh, you know, designing a system, AI system, in order to solve the problem at your hand. Uh, so it's a very, very uh, interesting and rewarding experience to be an AI engineer or AI scientist. And I would strongly encourage all of you to think about a career in AI. Yeah. So that's all from my side. Uh, if any questions are there, I mean, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, and thank you uh, once again for patiently uh, listening to me. And thank you, Shul Kursar and Debbie Institute for hosting this uh, nice talk. And all the best to your webinar series going forward. Before we start question and answer session, Shurka sir wants to uh, share some information. Uh, sir, please. Uh, Ashish, a very nice example. There is one vacancy of an emirate professor in our Devgiri. Can you join? Uh, I want That's to give a, some information to students. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words, sir. I, I really appreciate it. It means a lot for me. Thank you very much. Uh, you have given the example of the Google car. We have traveled more than 1.5 kilometers. And there is one software industry called EC Mobility. Okay. And they are working with German partners. And they are working for driverless cars and driver assist system. German city, and it's all pass a Kazarcha work software engineers in the Kam Kurta. So the data is the salary training. You know how to train and other things. Yes. When you have shown me that example, I immediately click. I am very happy. All but Turkey, Tikani, Ashi, industry, I am a mother, I am a shikle, that then I am a mother's career. Karat Thank you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> now we will start question and answer, sir. Uh, students want to know about you, sir. Sir, can you please explain your, uh, what about your job profile in Google? I cannot say a lot of things, but I can tell you that uh, I'm an AI engineer and my job day in and day out is to, uh, you know, look at data, understand it and build AI systems. Uh, something which is public, I can which I can say, um, I have uh, actually worked on you know, some of the products like Google Pay, and uh, now I'm working in uh, in Google Research. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Sir, how uh, we use AI in robotics? Um, in robotics, I think AI is used for a lot of things like planning, uh, where you are trying to uh, plan the motion of a robot. Uh, you can also use it for vision, where you want a robot to see certain things. Um, yeah, so there is path planning kind of applications, vision-like applications, uh, and probably also planning mechanical moves. How do you lift the hand and whatnot, right? I mean, this is all AI. So there is a special branch of AI called reinforcement learning, uh, which has a lot of applications to robotics. Apart from computer vision and this planning problems are essentially uh, reinforcement learning problems. So it's a very interesting analogy where we uh, we do not have 
we may not be able to give a lot of examples but you know uh, this is where uh, this is a paradigm where a uh, robot starts interacting with the environment and it gets reward from the environment and this is very close to how humans try to learn uh, sophia the first humanoid robot was introduced in 2016 what is the next level of advancement in the sophia robot i have no idea sorry okay sir what is the role of maths in ai yeah i i showed you this gradient descent right as one of the technique and uh, so you know optimization is one of the key uh, key topics in ai uh, so you know uh, one is essentially these functions different kind of functions that are being used uh, so there are these functions are used as models then there are a lot of statistical models based on different distributions uh right and then there are these optimization techniques so they all form crux of the ai not only ai but in general research right i mean you think about algorithms you think about data structures and we we also you know analyze complexity of the uh, complexity of algorithms so you know machine maths has huge role to play uh, in computer science in general uh, and whenever there are optimization uh techniques I and mean, mathematics is definitely involved not only in ai but also in databases in compilers everywhere there are optimizations because we need to work with uh, within a very very constrained environment and you have to extract maximum out of each of the system components so optimization is kind of everywhere right? so i would i would strongly encourage all of you to take your maths very very seriously calculus derivatives all these techniques all these techniques that you, you have learned will be uh, very useful things like matrix right you learn also matrix in standard 12 and matrix also form a very very important uh, basis for what is called as linear algebra and again which feeds into optimization and also for modeling so i think it's very very it's a very very key topic key subject and whatever you learn you should you should and if you are interested in ai or computer science in general in research uh, you should not forget those techniques those techniques are going to be useful for long long time hello sir yes. you no 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 that uh, i have heard that you have done your education up to 10th from marathi medium did it affect your career no ways no ways uh, learning in marathi medium is probably it did not affect my career uh, you know i also did all my i'm very very proud to uh, tell you that i have done all my education in india i have done including my phd uh, never went to us for any of these trainings and we get uh, equally good training uh, these days in our country and uh, yeah think about i mean there are good good schools good professors good, good institutes where you can do your phd's and higher studies in india and you don't have to pay huge amount of money uh, you know your parents don't have to shell out huge amount of money for taking that education uh, within our own country strong encourage you to think about it so there is one question from siddesh no data no ai it means we must have knowledge of data science no no not in data science so what are your problem that you are solving let's say you are solving the problem of recognizing a human face right you need to have enough examples of human face uh, to provide it to computer system if you are not able to provide the examples of human face you will just not be able to train the computer system to learn human faces so i i was talking about examples about uh, data in that particular context right so if you want to let's say uh, predict uh, the number of coronavirus cases tomorrow right computer won't be able to predict it out of thin air right you need to give uh, you know the trajectory of let's say coronavirus cases let's say in aurangabad last two months and then maybe we can learn some kind of a time series and try to predict what will happen what is likely to happen tomorrow or day after tomorrow so yeah. sir will ai reduce jobs in future very uh, interesting question uh again i will go back to 90s where uh, when computers were about to come in the banks uh, yeah so at that time people thought that you know there won't be any humans required in the bank that has not happened right so what happens is that whenever there are new technologies that come in uh, yeah certain jobs get obsolete but there are a lot of new jobs uh, that also uh, that also come in existence so you know ai is still in its infancy and uh, we do not know what kind of new jobs that are going to come up but i can think of some of the jobs like you know we need a lot of manpower in order to create data sets or the training data sets for ai systems and uh, you know you need to also maintain models 
there are a lot of jobs that will uh, I, i'm hopeful and i'm sure that there will a lot of jobs that will also uh, come up again these are my personal opinions um based on what i see sir what will be the future of for 5g technology i have no idea about it sir can mechanical student need to learn ai from utkarsh jawe you know it's it's useful you know ai is kind of a general technique and if you know about it you will be able to you know um, build interesting applications in your own domain right i told you example of self driving car right i mean car is not a uh, uh you know making car is not our forte right computer science forte but i mean we can use uh you know some of the data driven techniques for making it better right uh, you know having a car that drives itself is probably uh is the dream of all the drivers <laughs> and we we are all, 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 always pissed off with the traffic and the kind of hassles that we have to go through so if there is a car which is driving itself and why not so yeah this kind of yeah so it's important to i mean at least get a basic understanding of ai if not learning ai so that you are aware that there are these kind of techniques exist and if you have some very wacky idea uh, very revolutionary idea you will not feel constrained sir if there is uh, any correlation between ai and data science from ashish yeah ai and data science some people uh, you know use it very interchangeably data science has lot of lot more stuff i mean people expect you to have good business understanding also as part of data scientist you should also be able to you should have good, good social skills and collaborative skills where you should be able to talk with uh, people from different disciplines and uh, you know understand their uh, discipline and work with it for example let's say uh, you know uh, you are a data scientist and you have been asked to work with uh, problem in biology now you cannot say that you know i don't understand biology go learn it at least to a bit that you can have some kind of conversation so a lot more skills that are required beyond the core skills of ai um, yeah and good communication skills are also very very important part because you build some models and you have to go back and communicate those models to the business like uh, to the main experts so all these things are kind of yeah in part of data science so it's ai plus uh, you know business aspect is what i call it call it as data science can you please give a road map to have a good career in data science yeah i mean learn uh, learn a good language i mean have good understanding of computer science techniques i am assuming that you you will do engineering at least so that you have basic understanding and uh, then you know learn some language maybe python is a good language to learn i would say uh, and then essentially go go on uh, you know implementing some of these ideas right kaggle is a good place uh, to practice your data science skills so python then learn basics of ai or machine learning and start implementing the models and we will practice on kaggle right? don't think that you you will learn first maths linear algebra optimization statistics and then talk to ai not going to happen so learn all these things on the side as and when required but programming basics of ai and practice these are the three important things and other things you have to keep learning uh, as you as you progress Sir, what is the route to AI in engineering from Vaibhavi? Sorry, what is? Sir, what is the route to AI in engineering from Vaibhavi? Yeah, yeah, route is the same. I said, right? I mean, you have to learn a programming language. Uh, you know, master your con concept in statistics, linear algebra, you know, whatever you learn in maths one, two, three. Uh, yeah, all that, all, all that is important. I would say. Sir, I I think questions are over, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Your thought-provoking address set a perfect platform to all the students seeking bright career in engineering field. To extend hope of thanks, I would like to invite Dr. Satyavan Dhonge, Professor and Head Basic Science and Humanities Department, DIMS, Aurangabad. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. A warm afternoon to one and all. on behalf of basic science and humanity department devgiri institute of engineering and management studies aurangabad it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks and acknowledge the contribution of those for successful conduction of this webinar on career in artificial intelligence and machine learning my first 
एंड फॉरमोस्ट थैंक्स टू डॉक्टर आशीष तेंडुलकर मशीन लर्निंग स्पेशलिस्ट गुगल हू स्पेयर टाइम फ्रॉम हिज बिजी शेड्यूल टू ग्रेस द ओकेजन टुडे वी हैड एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू हियर योर थॉट्स एंड योर थॉट्स हैव इनलाइटेड स्टूडेंट्स माइंड्स एंड हैव शोन देम अ न्यू पाथ टुवर्ड्स ब्राइट फ्यूचर I express my deep gratitude towards our patrons honorable Sri Prakash Solanke president Marathwada Shikshan Prasarak Mandal honorable Sri Satish Chauhan secretary MSPM and honorable Sri Sheikh Salim Sheikh Ahmed vice president MSPM and all management for their support I would like to thank our director Dr Ullas Churkar for fostering a sense of support and appreciation that allowed us as educators to improve ourselves and to conduct such kind of programs which are beneficial to all the society i extend my gratitude towards professor sanjay kalyankar all heads of departments and all faculty members for their cooperation my special thanks to professor sr chinskelkar coordinator of this webinar and his team professor sujit choudhary professor vivek ballal professor siddesh nagrale professor rahul pande for their involvement and untiring efforts for the conduction of this webinar finally big thanks to our wonderful students seminar it is your ability that made this day a very memorable one we had many to learn to live and to con conquer for days to come dear students never give up until you achieve your dreams and dream big and go for it as long as you can success is only for those who work hard and run till the end thank you one and all thank you sir i declare that the webinar is over thank you one and all thank you thank you